Hello, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Um, I think I almost need, oh, I'm so scared to do this. Okay. I almost need to like angle this down slightly. <sighs> kind of didn't really work. Hang on. Wait, I got this. This webcam is super fun. Okay, wait. There's my floor. Can I get it? Can I get it? I got it. Did it. Okay, sweet. There we go. Hello, everybody tuning in. You only miss me trying to fix my webcam. Not a big deal. Um, let's see who we have joining us for today. It is Stretching and Catching Up Wednesday, one of my favorite days of the week, because um, usually after Monday and Tuesday, I'm ready to stretch and just chat with you guys. So today, what we are going to be talking about while you guys are hanging out. Hello, Coach Bryce. Today, what we are going to be talking about um, is kind of my story, how I got, oh, hi, Amari. Come here. She, you can see her shadow, but she's like, nah. Come here. Come here. Wow. <laughs> she's like, eh, flops over. Um, and she opened up the door. I'm just going to leave it because she's going to try and exit probably before I, I, if I close it. So anyways, today we're talking about my story, how I got into teaching. Um, and I'm also going to kind of just talk about how you get into teaching martial arts, especially, you know, we're talking mostly about beyond the belt here, <laughs> obviously. Um, and we're going to talk about, um, just kind of what it kind of takes to get into coaching at beyond the belt and that whole thing. So hi Larkin. Hi Susie. Um, welcome. Welcome. I still have not watched that video. I'm so sorry. I need to. I keep like, I keep like, go, oh, I'm going to watch it. And then I get started doing something like today. I decided I'm trying to do all these projects that I've just put off forever. So today I decided to try and hang curtain rods, which really hurts your shoulders. It's like a serious workout. Emily's here. Hi, Emily. Okay. So I'm going to close this door because my cat is now sticking her head under the bed. That rhymes. Okay. So we're going to start one leg in, one leg out. Okay, reach for our toes. This week, uh, if you've been doing classes, you know we've been really working on our hamstring and hip flexibility. So we're going to kind of continue with that. Amari, you want to join us? Oh, dude, I kid you not. She's headed for the door. Okay, no, she's 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 moving on. I don't know what she's doing. Okay, so while we're stretching, okay, um, let's kind of start way back at the very beginning. So I um, did not grow up doing martial arts, like as a five-year-old, like since I curled in, um, I would do, got into playing sports around eighth grade. Um, and I did field hockey and I did lacrosse, I did track. Um, I think I never really got into playing. Like, I mean, I would play like soccer and like wiffle ball and some Becker, but I never really got into like any of the traditional sports. I feel like, um, but I was really into field hockey and when I was a junior, when I was a junior in high school, um, I did, I went to this camp in Kutztown, Pennsylvania, and, um, it was a field hockey camp. I, you know, was there for like a week or something like that. And, um, one of the coaches at the end of the camp, um, had let me know. He was like, Oh, switch sides. He wanted to come watch me play field hockey like that fall for my team kind of like to scout me for the college which was super exciting especially when you know you just went to this summer field hockey camp thinking you're just doing it for fun and now all of a sudden there's like a, co a college coach that's interested in you so um so that was really cool and you know um he came and watched me play my junior year um my senior year he came back and watched again I had some other colleges interested uh, I was doing a lot of recruiting stuff, like making videos, sending up to colleges. I was really, really set on playing field hockey in college. Um, <laughs> the sad part was I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, um, like for my degree, which my parents were like, okay, listen, like, I'm really glad you want to play field hockey in college. But the main reason you're going to college is so you can learn something and do something with what you learn after college. So I, I really struggled with that part. <laughs> So, you know, you know, I went from, you know, journalism to I was going to do communications. Um, and I really was into music. We're going to go to straddle, guys. So both legs out like so, reach the middle. I was really into music all through high school. Um, and I was very interested in writing music and performing music, but I wasn't really into 
teaching music, like music education, which my mom was saying, like, hey, listen, if you want to go to college for music, you're going to either do music performance, which is going to be very classically trained music stuff, or music education. And I was like, I oh, do not want to be a teacher. <laughs> so I do not want to. I do not want to teach like, oh, please, no. So she's like, well, then you probably don't want to get a degree in music stuff. So I was like, yeah. So I was leaning towards communications and, like I said, journalism and all that. So as we get closer, it's a long story, as we get closer to, you know, me, uh, you know, getting into my senior year of high school and I got to make a decision. We're doing the FAFSA, in case you don't know what that is like to figure out financial aid for going to school and the SATs and all this. And it, it became very stressful because I felt, you know, even though I was being offered scholarships to play, college is still really expensive. And the colleges I was looking to go to were nice colleges that were expensive. So um, as we were crunching the numbers and everything, my mom and dad basically sat me down and said, look, you can go, I have no hands. You can go to one of these schools if you want to, but it's going to be very expensive and you're going to finish with a lot of debt. You're going to finish and have a lot of money to pay back basically um, when you are done. So we're going to shake our legs in. <sighs> Quick break. We're going to do our stretch we've been doing all this week. So we're sitting on our heels, right? I take one leg, kick it out. I'm going to reach now for my toes here, all right? Oh, this feels nice. So basically, I was faced with this decision of, do I go to college, play feel lucky, um, you know, get my degree, but I'm going to have a lot of college debt when I finished. And I really wanted to go play feel hockey, but I just could not wrap my head around being in that much debt just to play field hockey. Like I knew deep in my heart that I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do in terms of a career. I just really liked being competitive and I liked playing sports and I knew I was good at field hockey, but I just, I couldn't like, it just was not logical to me. So as much as it like hurt me and I felt like I was letting down my coaches and everybody that expected this from me, I decided not to accept any of the offers and I decided not to go to a traditional college. That being said, I did want to get my four-year degree. So I ended up starting my um, degree online. So I just figured, hey, you know what? It's cheaper. I did a lot of what's called club tests. So I was testing out of some of my like gen ed courses, like my basics, like humanities and uh, literature and stuff like that. So so anyways, I know this is a long story. I promise we're getting there. So so as all this is happening, okay, you know, I'm feeling like I have a void. I, I'm used to playing competitive sports, and I want to do something like that. Um, I think it was probably, yeah, it was probably the spring after I graduated um, that we had some friends that were telling us that, oh, they, you know, went down to this, this dojo and they trained. Um, and I remember thinking, ooh that sounds like fun. <laughs> I remember thinking two things. One, Ooh, that sounds like fun. I really want to do that. And two, Oh, but man, like, doesn't like, if you want to be good at that, don't you have to start when you're like five years old <laughs> and I'm way too old to start doing this at this point. So we're going to switch sides. Oh, I'm sorry. I stay on that side so long. That just felt so good in my hip and my hamstring. Whew, okay. So anyway, so at that point, I remember distinctly feeling like I really want to do this, but I'm kind of scared to because I was like, oh man, this is going to be so embarrassing. People are going to make fun of me that I'm like, you know, starting this at this age. And But I was like, you know what? If I don't start now, I'm going to regret and I'm just going to get older and then I'm going to regret it even more. <laughs> so I went down to Beyond the Belt and we met with Sensei Carl. I remember it was my mom and um, my sister Becky, which many of you guys know Becky, um, my brother Caleb. And the three of us, we signed up and I remember my very first class, my very first class, I was super nervous because basically my mom, not trying to throw you under the bus mom, but my mom, I was 16, I was, I think I was like 16 or 17 and my mom basically, yeah, I think it was 17. My mom basically didn't want me to go in the adult class because it was 
a bunch of giant men. We talked about this the other week. And so she was like, oh, I want her to go in the teen class. And when I went in the teen class, it was like a lot of tiny people. <laughs> so here I am. I've graduated high school. I'm like, sweet. I want to train martial arts. I'll be competitive. And I'm in a class with a bunch of like 12 year olds. So it made me feel extra insecure about starting. And yeah, so, but whatever, I, I still really enjoyed it. It made it a little bit easier because I had my brother and sister there, um, but I loved it. And it got to the point that I was training, but then I asked Sensei Carl, well, hey, and this, by the way, is back when Dojo was after its second renovation. So it had Dojo A, the big dojo by the um, office. But the other dojo, the one with the pole in it, was n not that big. It was like half that size. Um, so the, Emily, you won't even remember this because you came after this happened. So, and I think the La Foule, oh, the La Crew, I'll just say that, the La Crew came after this. So you guys won't even remember this. But anyways, I remember asking since the car, like, well, hey, you know, they only had one class going on at a time most of the time. Oh, this hurts so bad. All right. Now we get our next stretch. Hip flexor stretch. Neil. We step this foot out, lean forward, and I'll just dip down so you can see me. I remember asking, like, hey, can I come down and train in the other dojo while the class is going on? Just because I wanted to train more, and, and he said yes. So I remember going down, and sometimes I would go down before class starts. What am I? Oh, it's a guitar. It's like, what am I kicking? And I'd go down before class started, and I would punch the bag, and I had no idea what I was doing, but I was punching the bag. And I remember going down on my birthday, um, and doing a little workout in there. And I did this probably for a month, you know, to the point that my mom was like, why are you spending so much time down there? I would go down there and I would do my little workout on the bag and, you know, I'd come over regular classes. And finally, after my birthday, switch sides, my mom um, said, okay, you know what? You can move up to the adult class. And I was so excited. Um, <laughs> I was so pumped. I went up to the adult class and, uh, I started like actually getting to grappling, like real grappling with like giant adults. And I had so much fun. So I was at this point, I, so I had just got my orange belt. Um, and I went down there and I was doing my thing. I was doing my little workout or whatever. And since Carl wanted to talk to me. Um, and so, you know, we went in the office, which by the way, in case you didn't know this, the merch room used to be the office. And it was a really tiny office, but that used to be the office. Good. Ah, oh, that feels good. That, was, that feels good, I say. Go to Butterfly Stretch. And so he pulled me in the office and he said, um, you know, hey, I want to talk to you about you helping teach some of the kids' classes. And I remember thinking, I don't want to teach. I don't like teaching. I want to train. I want to be competitive. Like, I don't know what exactly I was going to do at that point, but I just remember feeling like I want to do hardcore martial arts. Okay. Not teach little tiny kids, but I was like, eh, okay, let's just hear him out. What he has to say. And, you know, basically he said, you know, that, and this is the time since Carl was literally like running everything by himself. He had, there were no coaches, um, there were junior instructors, but they were all mostly like little kids. We didn't have like any of these older junior instructors, like the Emily's, um, I'll say Bryce, but he's a junior coach now, but you get the idea. So he's like, yeah, we just wanted to have somebody kind of underneath me that, you know, if I need to take time off or whatever. Um, and so I, you know, I thought about it and I was like, eh, let's just give it a try and see what happens. Um, <laughs> and that's how it all started. So <laughs> I showed up for my first class. I was in help with a beginner juniors class. And I remember being super like weird out because I had to wear pants. You guys all know what I'm talking about. And I was like, used to wearing the board shorts and I had to wear pants. And I was like, oh man, I have to wear pants. Oh, these are so uncomfortable. And I, you know, went down and got in uniform. And of course I'm wearing white pants and my white shirt because I'm an orange belt. And Sensei Carl was like, why are you wearing a white uniform? And I was like, because I don't have a black uniform. And he's like, what? And I was like, because I'm an orange belt. And he's like, I thought you were a purple belt. And I was like, no. And he's like, oh, you're not supposed to teach unless you're a purple belt. And I was like, oh, well, uh, I'm give him a purple belt now. Like, I don't know. <laughs> so I went in my first teaching class as an orange belt, um, because since I like, couldn't remember what belt I was. This is why we have cards. 
All right, one leg in, one leg out, one more time. You should feel a little bit more flexible doing this now. Hopefully your chest is getting closer to your knee. So I went in and I remember learning so much about um, teaching children that day. Namely, kids smell fear, okay? Junior instructors, if you're listening, if you're watching, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You go in and you're like, oh, I'm kind of nervous about teaching today. And they literally can smell that you are nervous about it, right? And I went and I remember Zach, um, which a lot of you guys know Zach, second degree, almost second degree black belt Zach, okay? Ginger, the ginger guy, ginger ninja, okay? And he was probably at the time, I want to say six. Oh gosh, this makes me sound so old, okay? And I remember going in and he was a purple white belt at the time. And he looked at me and he said, I'm a higher rank than you. And I would be like, okay, I'm done. I'm going home. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh. And that first class, I learned a lot. I learned that I was very afraid of children. Um, I learned that I was very afraid of talking in front of a group of people. And it was very hard to figure out what to say when you put on the spot. And Sensei Carl definitely put me on the spot quite a few times. Um, and shortly thereafter, we transitioned, which I'd speak in transition, um, into the second renovation of Beyond or second yes second renovation to beyond the belt um which is the beyond belt you guys see today that giant dojo with the pole the little pagoda changing room and so you know when that happened since the girl was trying to basically do a lot of that construction himself while still teaching classes and now he was down to only one dojo because the other dojo was being ripped up to pieces so a bigger dojo could be built so he would say things like okay Morano, can you teach this real quick the advanced juniors and i'm like i've never taught this in my life i don't I don't know if I can do this. And so that's how I learned how to coach. <laughs> so, um, so that, yeah, that's kind of basically my story. Um, and some of you guys might've already known that, but some of you guys might not have. And over the years, um, it was quite a process. So this is going to kind of segue into our topic today. And please, if any of you have any questions about, um, you know, maybe you're interested in being a coach someday or taking on more responsibilities, or maybe you're not even coaching at Beyond the Belt, but you're interested in being a teacher in some capacity when you get older or you are a teacher, I'd love to hear you chime in about your thoughts on this. So coaching, okay, um, at Beyond the Belt, and I think in, you know, I can't speak for other dojos, but I think martial arts in general that use belt ranking, this is one bone I have to pick with the belt ranking, okay, is that it makes coaching very challenging, okay? Now, I think beyond the belt right now, I have to give kudos to the uh, parents and the adults. We're going to do both legs out, guys. Reach out for our toes. That we have a really awesome group of parents and students where, you know, um, Coach Tyler, for example, can go in and teach class as a red belt, okay? And even though he's not a black belt, parents look at him and go, wow, you know, he's a higher rank. He's been doing this a while. He's very mature. He's great with kids, okay? And people enjoy having him as an instructor. But it used to not be like that, okay? We used to be on the belt. And for like I said, for all I know, this might be an issue I feel like with potentially other schools, but I'm not speaking about them because I don't know about them. I just know about us. So it used to be, you know, and part of it was because it was just Sensei Carl that when I started teaching, I actually had a decent amount of students and, uh, and parents that would come up to me and go, well, how come you're not a black belt? You know? And it was a little insulting because you know, granted, I, you know, at the point, at that point in time, I hadn't been teaching as long as I was a girl. And no, I wasn't a black belt. You know, I was a blue belt or a green belt or whatever. But I remember thinking, okay, I'm working really hard. And the techniques I need to teach these kids, these six-year-olds, I am perfectly capable of doing. I don't need my black belt to teach a six-year-old these moves. You know, it's like saying, you know, hey, my little four-year-old wants to learn how to play soccer. You don't have to be taught by an Olympic soccer player you know <laughs> at that point it's like yeah eventually you know you'll want to have those fine-tuned skills you want to be taught by black but you know at these lower levels you're looking for somebody that's competent somebody that's you know intelligent somebody that is good at keeping small kids attention things like that so i remember being almost like it was almost a little scary i would come in and i would almost have like a sense of dread um depending on who was in class. Cause I was like, Oh boy, so-and-so's here. And I know their mom, dad, whatever 
is not going to be happy because I'm teaching and Sensei Carl isn't. Okay. And I don't necessarily blame these parents. So real quick. So we're going to go like a crisscross applesauce, right? One leg on top of the other. Now we're just going to lean forward onto our elbows. This might not look like it's doing much. I guess I should turn this way. Okay. But whatever leg is on top. Okay. That hip right into our glute. We lean forward like this. You'll get a nice stretch back in here. If you don't feel it. Okay. And you're like, oh, I feel like in my knee or something. Make sure you're not like, like reposition your foot. Basically, it's like bring your foot a little higher, bring your foot a little lower. But you shouldn't feel like a strain in your knee. Okay, you should feel it in your hip going into your glute. So, I don't blame parents necessarily for this. It's just a, like a cultural conditioned response to the belting system. Is that if you are not wearing a black belt, you clearly are not good at martial arts. I will be honest with you. Okay, we've had some people come in to the adult class and say, oh, I'm a black belt and blah, 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 blah. And trying to be nice here, they were very unusual people that did not really impress me with the way they interacted with my students and the way they sparred my students and their technique wasn't even that good. Okay, so again, I'm not saying that they're not good at martial arts at all, but it wasn't like, wow, you are so much better just because you have a piece of paper that says you're a black belt. You know, so I, it's just, a cultural thing though that you think okay well black belt is good you don't have a black belt so you can't be a good teacher and it's just not true okay the other thing too is think about other sports okay um football baseball you know even boxing okay it's like the coach has the experience and is good at explaining and demonstrating potentially okay the drills and the techniques and the material that does not mean they're also uh you know, a star studded athlete in that sport at the same time. Okay. Think about, you know, NFL coaches, for example, it's like, <laughs> especially the older coaches are not still currently playing the game while they are doing this. Okay. So, you know, like you do, like I said, you do want to be proficient. Okay. But that's the beauty about being a teacher. Okay. Sensei, right. Is you are there to teach, not be the all powerful, masterful athlete. Okay. If you can do both great. But the point is, it's like, my job is to be good at explaining this and, you know, getting it across to your child, not executing it perfectly right now. Sure, we're all learning. We're all students at the same time, but hopefully it makes sense. So when it comes to being a coach, we're going to switch sides. I'm really sorry. I'm kind of holding these stretches forever. I'm just really enjoying talking. <laughs> Other leg goes on top. Lean forward here. If you want to throw in any of your own stretches, please do so. Um, I'm just doing some basic little sitting stretches that you can do that feel really good in your hips and your back. If you've been sitting around doing school or working. Um, so becoming a coach would be on the belt. Okay. I'm going to break this down into three pieces so I don't talk forever. Okay. Piece number one or requirement number one, I guess. Okay. Three re requirements. Um, one, okay. Is you do not do it for money. Okay. And we, I don't like talking about beyond the belt like it's a business. But we do have to be realistic here, okay? You can't go, I'm going to just teach martial arts all day long because I love it so much. And then you have no livelihood and you can't afford food. You can't afford anywhere to live. So it's like, okay, we do have to talk about a little bit, okay? You do need an income, okay, as an adult that has to eat and has to sleep somewhere and has to shower, hopefully. But if you want to teach martial arts, okay, the first rule is you do not do it for money. You make money as like in order to live off of, but you don't do it in the hopes of I'm going to be a multimillionaire teaching martial arts. Okay. So kids out there, they're like, man, I want to coach martial arts someday. You know, I just love martial arts. I want to teach beyond the belt. We don't do it for the money. Do not look at it. Like my summer job is going to be beyond the belt. Okay. It's like, we do it because we, it's almost like we do it because we love it. Okay. I'm not even trying to explain it in a fancy way. We do it because we love it. Butterfly stretch. Okay. And it's nice. You know, I'm grateful every single day that this gets to be my job, but I am not, you know, <laughs> it's not like I, I could, if I wanted to make more money, I, I would pick a different profession. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's that I do it because I love it. Now, that being said, okay, I will be, from my point of view, I'll be honest and say that I would rather do what I love and enjoy what I do than make a ton of money. That's just me personally. Okay. Because I wake up every day. It's my experiences are worth more than something I could buy, if that makes sense. Okay. But if you want to get into coaching, especially when you start, 
it's it's very uh, low financial reward. When I first started teaching for Sensei Carl, back when he first brought it up, okay, and many of you guys will um, you know know this, okay. It, I worked for free. I taught. I was down there every single day. And since like Carl tried to kick me out, part of this was just my fault because I enjoyed it so much. But I was down there every single day, just in every single class. The point my mom was like, why are you going down there so much? Like, this is getting ridiculous. I was like, I love it. I just want to be down there all the time. You know, to eventually, I think, you know, I was getting paid like maybe $10 a class or something like that. You know, it was just like little things here and there, you know. Um, but it's like. I didn't do it because, wow, I bet I could make a ton of money doing this. I did it because I loved it. Okay. You don't get into coaching because I want to make money off of it. You get into coaching because the reward of seeing kids or adults or teens or whoever you're teaching grow, you know, through their character and through their techniques, that is the reward. Okay. So rule number one, coaching is not about, <laughs> coaching is not about finances. Okay. It's about passion. Rule number two. Okay you will have to climb the ladder. Now, a lot of people, we're going to go to frog stretch, guys. A lot of people see what I do, okay? And, um, oh, my hips hurt so much. Um, <laughs> a lot of people see what I do and they go, wow, since I that's so nice. Like, you're a head instructor, okay? That just sweet. What I do took a long time. I started, I started teaching back in 2012. It is now 2020, okay? And like I said, I started out just being in every class, not even teaching every class, not like, oh, I'm in charge, just physically being in the room with something like Carl, okay? He would throw me a bone every once in a while. Hey, you know what? Coach Beth is going to teach this or teach that. And I was so excited. And it was great. Um, there were many classes where I remember you know, as since like Carl gave me more and more freedom, he would go, we don't do things that way. And it was like a little embarrassing because I messed up, but it took a long time. I did not become the instructor I am today within a three month window. It has been years. And even now I still have classes where it's like, Oh, I feel like I could have done that better. Okay. And maybe you're a kid going, yes, I'm saying Beth, you could have done it better. We a hundred percent agree with you on that. Okay. But so rule number two, okay. Is you're in it for the long haul. Okay. Takes patience. You do not climb the ladder right away. Okay. You want to be a really good instructor. You're going to have to put the time in. There's just no way around it. Okay. Junior coaches, if you're watching Bryce, if you're watching, okay. And you're going, man, I want to teach my own classes. I want to be a, a full-time coach, be prepared and be patient because you do not just shoot up the ladder. It, you have to climb every single step and it's going to be worth it though, because you learn every time you climb a step. Okay. Last but not least, okay, um, and this is kind of like a, it's kind of like a pointer and an answer to a question at the same time. Um, for pointer, pointer number three, step number three, I don't even know what I'm calling them anymore, but the third one is if you want to be a coach and you want to teach, you show it through your actions. Um, like the junior coach program, for those of you who don't know what that is, oh, come on up. Oh, that feels good. The junior coach program is basically, um, Sounds like Carl and I picked out um, high ranking teen students, so like red, red, black belt, black belt teen students um, that we have seen, you know, in their junior instructing classes, um, just how they act in lobby, how they act as a person outside the dojo. We thought, okay, if they're interested in coaching, they would be really good at it, just how they act every single day. Um, and even right now, like there are kids coming up that I'm really excited for them to be like one or two years older because I know they would be so good at this or one or two belts higher or whatever, um, you know, just to have that experience of maturity. But anyways, um, if you want to, to be a coach, you start practicing now. OK, you start doing it now. Don't go, well, you know, I really want to be a coach. So when I'm, you know, 15, I'm going to start acting a certain way. So that way, since I Beth will see how good I am. It's like. Why are you not practicing that now? You know, why are you not doing that now? Um, and some of us, we, you know, we kind of get thrown into it. Like I didn't want to be a teacher. Okay. And Sensei Carl kind of molded me a little bit because I was very competitive and I had a lot of that energy, which you guys still know about now a little bit less because my hip always hurts apparently. Um, <laughs> but you guys, you guys know, okay. Just through my personality at this point that, there was a certain element of a personality that turns out was really good for coaching. Okay. 
So find what you're already kind of good at and start working on that now, if that makes sense. So um, I'm going to see if you guys have any questions, okay? Um, looks like Susie said something. I remember being confused about children that were higher ranked than the adult teacher who clearly was more skilled. Can you speak to the difference between, say, a 10-year-old red belt and Coach Jacob's red belt? Good question. So basically, the way, and again, this is why the belts kind of, not frustrate me, um, but this is why I like, we talked about this actually a couple of videos back on a Wednesday. So go back and watch. I talk about our take with the belt presentation. Now I'm telling you to watch a video. Um, but basically, basically um, at the end of the day, the belt should be looked at as like a little bit of like a diploma sort of thing. Think about like when you're graduating college, okay. Or high school. It's like, there's some people that get a diploma and they were the valedictorian. There are some people that got a diploma and they barely passed with like C's. You know what I mean? But they also got the diploma, right? They also graduated. But at the end of the day, there are some graduates that are going to be a little bit more skilled than others. It's kind of the same thing with the belt where it's like, okay, you have reached the requirement for this belt. Now, some of you, okay, you have did your evaluation. It was like, wow, you blew it out of the water. You are the valedictorian of your green belt. Ta -da. And then other of you, it's like, okay, well, you know what? You're 10. Um, and you know, you're smaller. You're not nearly as strong. Your coordination is not kicked in yet because you are 10. You haven't hit your growth spurt or whatever you, you're like a uh, coach Dylan when he was that age and you like trip over your own legs. But at the same time, you, you know, the moves, they're not great because like I said, age, coordination, size, strength, whatever, but you do know the moves. And then as you get older, it's going to kind of become more fluid. Um, and I think at this point too, like you can almost see, especially like if you were somebody like Susie, that you're a parent that's been at Beyond Belt for a while, you can almost see what I'm talking about where it's like, you'll see kids that are green belt. And there's Coach Chad, who's a green belt. Coach Chad is, I don't, oh gosh, I can never remember his age because I feel like he's like 35, but he's, I know he's definitely not 35 because um, I'm pretty sure he has grandkids, which completely blows my mind. But anyways, you have somebody like Coach Chad, who's super buff, okay? He's an adult. He's a green belt. But you'll see a kid that's a green belt, okay? And obviously they're not Coach Chad's level, but you go, yeah, that, that kid knows what they're doing. They're not perfect at it, but you can see it's not like, how do I throw a tie kick? They're like, they know what they're doing and you can see them like going for it and trying it for it, even though it might not turn out perfectly. So hopefully that kind of makes sense a little bit. And it is, like I said, confusing. And this is why I think the whole belting, I know I'm kind of getting a little off topic here. I'm so sorry. The whole belting discussion um, is very, I think we need to change our philosophy and our mindset about it and treat it more, like I said, of a, Hey, congratulations. Here's like, it's motivational. It kind of shows that you've reached a certain point, but not your skill matters because of this belt, if that makes sense, you know? And I think culturally we think that a lot, like, oh man, like they must be so good because it has, or they must not be any good because they're a white belt. I've had some people come in, okay, not to pick on Coach Chad again, but Coach Chad was one of them. People come in and start training. And I remember Coach Chad's white belt, he was clunky and he was, you know, certain things weren't great, but he was very athletic and he had a good sense of what he was doing, especially with grappling because he wrestled in college. Okay. That's not martial arts, but that's going to really help out. Right. Um, so it's like, you know, our life experience and things like that will play a lot into it. our size makes a big difference. Okay. Bryce, Emily, I mean, even Larkin, if you're still watching right now, Larkin in the adult class, it's like, you know, that size you're like, okay, yeah, I'm a red belt, but here I'm going against Derek in the adult class who, you know, granted is only a belt or two lower. I think he's green black belt. So it's like a belt lower than you, but he weighs like a hundred pounds more than you. Like that's going to matter, you know? So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, I'm just going to check Facebook. I feel so sorry if anyone was writing me on Facebook because I got rambling. Okay. No. So to wrap things up. Okay. Um, hopefully this was enjoyable for you guys. I just kind of wanted to share, uh, how I got started. And uh, to this day, I don't even fully understand the, the pieces and why it happened. But the main reason, apart from talking about coaching and, you know, coaching at Beyond the Belt, I wanted to kind of just use this as an example of when things happen that seem not very good at the time, you never know what could come from it. Because I went into a bit of a depression when I first found out I was not going to be going away to college and playing field hockey. That was like my dream was to 
you know, do that. We went to all these college field hockey games and I would see, you know, the teams on the turf field. And I was so excited for that experience and it never happened. Um, and if it, you know, had happened, I, the things would be so different. I'm not saying bad, but like so different because I didn't go away to college. Um, I met coach Jacob, first of all, which is kind of a horrible mistake. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. I met coach Jacob. Um, I know all of you people and I get to teach at beyond the belt, um, which has been an incredible life changing experience for me. And not even like I said, not in a, wow, I drive a Lamborghini. Wow. We live in a mansion. Okay. But just my, I feel like it has done such good things, such, such good, th- done such good things for my English. <laughs> it's done so many great things for my character and for, you know, just my soul. I don't know. It's just, it's been, it's been very strange. And hopefully, you know, Beyond Belt has given that to you. And that's why if you're interested in coaching, you're like, I want to give that back to somebody else. I applaud you because that truly has no price tag to see kids. And it really got me last year, the black belts, when I see kids that are now, you know, I remember them getting their black belt when they were like 13 and now they're, you know, off at college, they're in the military, they're studying to do these things that you're like, what, you're an adult now, like, and you can see that, you know, they go, they just, and not about me, not about Sensei Carl, but about Beyond the Belt as a whole, they always come back and go, I learned this because of my team at Beyond the Belt, okay, and that's you guys, that's the parents they interact with, the, the camaraderie of the students in class, having that routine and having that, like, that grounding of coming in and training with their friends and getting beat up a little bit, losing, winning. Okay. Um, getting frustrated, getting angry sometimes kind of having the reconciliation of, Oh man, I'm angry at, uh, you know, Larkin because she kept arm barring me, but wow, I actually got better because Larkin kept arm barring me. <laughs> so, but anyways, I'm kind of rambling at this point. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed listening and hopefully you guys some good stretching in. Um, I think even Sage might be watching, by the way. I don't know if Sage is, but Catherine said they were going to be here. So if Sage is watching too, hello, Sage and Catherine. Um, if you have any topics you would like to hear me talk about moving forward, even when we do reopen, I plan on continuing doing a session like this and just having like an open-ended discussion. I find that even if you know you didn't know you were looking for information, that I would like to be able to have an opportunity to talk to you about topics at Beyond the Belt. Like I said, just put it on in your car when you're driving, while you're cooking, cleaning, and just listen. And maybe you'll learn something uh, helpful about your experience because I really do. I want it to be more than you guys just show up for class and get credit and oh wow, I got a belt and this is important because society says it is. I want you to feel like you understand 100% what's going on with our school and why we do things. So, on that note, ugh, I guess scoot way forward. Also, real quick, I have like like a little tiny like rat tail going on. So just forgive that. Amari, I'm so ashamed you did not come and make an appearance for our, our guests. Should I get her real quick? Okay, wait, wait. Oh, hi baby. Can I pick you up please? No, 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 Say hi. She's so cute. And this is totally unprofessional, but I don't even care. Hi. This is what we do sometimes. (laughs) You're famous. If I'm not careful, or rather, yeah, if I'm not careful, she will scratch me and potentially chew me. But right now she's okay. Good girl. I know I woke you up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she goes. That's all for today, everybody. Hope you have a good rest of your day. I will see you tomorrow at 10:30 and 11:30 for classes. See you all later. Bye.